Welcome back to to the solving of this problem. Now, in this part, we're gonna try to solve it algebraically. Um, so we we have we have this we have this graph right here, and and let's let's just try to solve it algebraically now. So so let's uh, let's just look at part B. Okay, so part B says, how much work does the force do on the block in moving it from x equals 0.1 to uh, 0.4 meters. Well, before we we delve into this problem, let's try to derive an equation first from this from this uh, from this thing right here. Okay, so let's just before we drive it for the entire thing, um, I just want to I just want to drive it for this triangular part because we can look at it separately. So I just want to know how do how we can do it for the triangular part part for the work. So this says work we as we all know work is equal to force times distance. Well, well, what does force equal to in in this context? So then let me let me rewrite this so for uh, in a in a good color. So work is force times distance. All right. So what does force equal to in this context? Well, force is equal to k times x, right? So, which means we can put kx into here. So, work is equal to work is equal equal to kx times d. What is d? Well, d is d is x. So, x again. So, so basically, work is equal to kx squared. But wait. Didn't we, didn't we agree that because this is a triangle, it's going to be one half base times height? Well, yes, we did. That is why we must put one half in front of it because this this equation right here represents the triangle, so it's going to be one half times kx. Kx squared, I mean. Um, just in case that explanation was kind of confusing. Um, let's let's do it this way. So so the triangle, the area we know that area of the triangle is, or or we establish that area of the tri the area calculated here is the work. So area, which is work, is equal to one half base times height, right? So what's base times height? Well, base is basically the x, and height is basically the height, uh, the force. So if if we so this is d times f so f times d that's work so f, one half f times d is equal to a which is work does that kind of make sense like work is equal to one half base because a is a is um a is work so one half times base which is the distance times height which is the force so we just the so distance times force and if we just rewrite that differently it would it would just be one half force times distance and we know that force is equal equal to kx so we just plug that in here so work is one half um, kx times distance and distance is x so, so it's just this so work is equal to just one half kx squared kx times x, which is also equal to one half kx squared. So now, now that we have clarified, e clarified it even more, um, let's try to solve this problem. Well, in this problem, it's it's it seems like there's a there's an initial and a and a final. Well, it turns out that since um, in the original equation by whoever that scientist was. Um, he he said that work is equal to negative kx, which means this right here has to be a negative. And since we are, um, since in in uh, all the other kinematic equations and stuff, we always have added the the um, whatever the original value was, like. Um, 
for average accelerate uh, average velocity equation we've um, we've added it so like x over t is equal to one half basically v plus v naught right here because because it ha you have to account for it so even even in um, this x uh, change in x equal to v naught t plus one half a t squared. We we added added this v naught. So we're gonna we're gonna have to add the v naught the the x naught here as well. So one half k x naught x naught squared. I hope this makes sense, at least a little bit of sense. So let me can move and then and then if you rearrange this, you just get one half k x naught squared. I'm just putting the positive first, minus because this is a minus sign right here, minus one half k x squared. All right. Okay. So that that that's what the work is for for a uh, straight like a triangle looking thingy. So it's basically like like the spring. It's how you calculate it for a spring. So I guess um, blocks acting on by a spring and then the spring stops stretching and stuff. And it only stretches, I guess. Doesn't have the spring force anymore. Loses its spring force or something. I guess that's what it's implying. But anyway, um, we we have this equation now. Now that we have this, now we now that we have this equation, um, we can solve for anything, any value uh, between in in this triangle. So if you start here and here, you can you can calculate it, calculate the value here in any way possible, and and stuff like that. So, so that's useful here. So when we look at this, it's from point one to point four. So, so this one is saying it's from point four, point or point one to point four. Point four. So it wants to. So it's asking for. Asking for this whole area right here. Okay. Well, how do we, how do we calculate this area? Well, we we have this equation right here, right? And the rule of thumb for spring equations is that the x naught has to be a higher value than than the x. So that that's one thing that you have to remember. So we're gonna we're gonna do that right now. So one half. So for the so now we're gonna calculate the work f that is used in here in in this this little this little segment right here. Okay. Out of out of this uh, blue shaded area, so one half k. Uh, so the work for that part is one half k, which is this, which is also equal to eighteen thousand for me, times times x naught squared. And since x naught squared is always the bigger one, um, this is going to be point two three because. Uh, it it wouldn't make sense if work was negative because then that would then the thing would go the other direction so that that wouldn't really make sense. But I mean I guess it does make sense for it to be negative because it's acting on the opposite direction and slows it. Down. Well I guess well anyway ask your physics teacher so if if you have more questions I will not go into so de so depthy lengthy um description about that so this so basically I'm going to continue this in a very shallow level so 18,000 or 18 000, it is 18,000 right yeah 18,000 times x is the final which is uh, 0 0.1 so it seems like it's going backwards but that, that this is how 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 it, it, it works right yeah okay now we're gonna calculate this part of the thing and it, this one is a square so we can just do base times height and base is just 0 0.4 minus 0 point 0.23 which is just 0 0.17 times times the height which is so work equals times height which is 4140 and now we just basically add those two together for the net network so our network is going to be um, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 18,000 
times 0.23 squared minus 0.5 times 18,000 times 0.1 squared plus, because we're adding this to this, 0.17 times 4140. That's going to equal to 1089.9, or just 10, 10, 1090 newtons. I mean, a joule, sorry, joules. So let's enter that into our web assign. And I'm waiting for the answer. And it says it is correct. So, so that's basically how you do it Al algebraically. Okay. So, I mean, I'm sorry if I confused you more than uh, I helped you. And I might say this in every video, but I apologize. Well, anyway, I hope I um, helped you even greater to become a more successful physics student.